I'm not here to sugarcoat it right now. I'm hurt. I'm hurt, dog. Don't ask me if I'm all right right now. We're pushing through. This is, uh, I'm about I'm about to go into a little bit of a story time, I suppose, so y'all can look at the timestamps down below and just skip ahead if you don't give a fuck about me or the well-being of a human being, you know, if you're just rude as shit. By all means, skip ahead. You know what? I woke up today. I fell asleep at 8.30 p.m. last night. 8.30 p.m. How fucking old am I, you know? And I woke up at like 6.30. My body woke up in shambles, like aching, you know? You would have thought I got hit by, by a fucking... Dwayne McBride yesterday, one on one, and like from head to toe, and it felt it felt a lot like COVID. I got COVID like I don't know, two September of twenty one or some shit, and it, it it destroyed me. And I actually remember this is actually kind of funny. I was on a live stream with y'all, and uh, it had been a weekend that I I cut out caffeine. Right, I drink so much like straight up one. I didn't even plan this shit out. Two, three, like you don't even know. You don't even know. You never know what I'm doing back here. And I cut out caffeine because I was like, this is just ruining my life. I just drink so much caffeine. I'm going to go cold turkey on a motherfucker, right? So there was like a Friday that I was like, this weekend is when I start. And I had a wedding on Sunday. So I go to the wedding, cut out caffeine. I come back from Monday. And this is in the middle of the season. I remember this because the, the wedding was on the first Sunday of football season. So Monday I had to do like the recap video, you know, going game by game. And I got on the live stream and I could, I could barely speak. I thought I was going to melt into my chair like physically melt and become one with the chair. And I remember being like, man, cutting out caffeine like really has me having withdrawals. You know, when like you know, people stop doing drugs, they have withdrawals. I was like, caffeine is a drug for me. And I've drank so much of it over such a long period of time that this makes sense. I've seen enough movies. I know what withdrawals be looking like. So I was like, this is crazy. I just got to push through this. And then I got on the phone with my mom that night. And I remember being like, yeah, the caffeine withdrawals are killing me. And she's like, Nick, you're a fucking moron. Go get tested for COVID. You're not having caffeine withdrawals. So, you know, mom was always right. Got tested, got fucking fitted up. And uh, my body was just aching. It was just Kamar aching for a few days. And that's how I felt when I woke up today. I felt a little bit better right now, but I'm just letting you know we're pushing through because I love you and I feel safe and protected in this hat. You know, it's one of the last days that I feel like I can wear this hat right now because we're transitioning into spring here. In the city and there's no reason to be wearing this hat other than i look good as fuck in it what is this video about oh okay you know what hopefully you didn't skip the intro because today's video is diving into five massive mistakes that new dynasty players make that tend to set their team back years whether it's the startup draft or just overall strategy, because we are, we have been organizing and putting together a lot of dynasty leagues for you guys in the discord free to join. So if you are new here, if you are new to dynasty and want to get in a real competitive league, all you got to do is go join our discord link down below and you'll get in a welcome message automatic that will give you instructions on how to join. Sexy Patrickson is organizing them for y'all. So I wanted to make, you know, as we are opening them up to you guys, a lot of you guys are new. So you want to know what mistakes to avoid because Dynasty is a long-term game, man. It's not just like, all right, I fucked up year one. We now get to redraft. It's like, nope, if you fuck up off the rip, you're done for. There is no Band-Aid to finish, to fix you. There is nothing. You are a pathetic piece of shit. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about five different things that I see a lot of new Dynasty players make, mistakes that I made when I first got into it that left me very, very far behind on the totem pole. And then we're going to have one tip for commissioners on how to make sure that your league stays competitive, people continue wanting to play, and they don't ruin the future of your league. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. The first one up is the startup draft, trading up to have multiple picks in the first round of a startup draft. You know, if you're in a 12 teamer, obviously those first 12 picks are absolute premium. You're getting one, two of the top 12 players in all of fantasy football, hopefully for a long period of time. Trading up into the first round of a startup draft, however, is going to cost you two arms, two legs, both your ears, and a motherfucking kneecap. Okay, so you don't want to do that because I'm going to talk a lot about depth throughout this video, okay? And how you should be looking at depth as it refers to Dynasty. There's good and there's bad to it. Not every team needs to have depth. I think there are different parts of the year in which depth is more valuable and when you should be trading players in order to acquire more depth or trade away some of your depth for more firepower. The startup draft is not when you want to trade away depth, okay? When you are in a startup draft and you want to trade up for a second 
first round startup pick, you're usually going to have to give up something like your second pick or like the third, the fifth and a future first. So you're giving up a lot of assets and you might look and say, hey, oh, okay, that future first, not really not a big deal. Hey, the third and the fifth, not a big deal. But I promise you multiple picks in the middle round of a startup draft are about 50 times more valuable than having multiple first rounders, right? Would you rather have two first rounders or would you rather have six picks within the third, fourth, fifth round? I would much rather have that middle piece. Depth is so important post draft because it give not, not who cares about what your depth looks like post draft from an injury standpoint, right? It's nice to have depth in case someone gets hurt and you could throw somebody else in there. But depth is really important post draft because it gives your team maneuverability and flexibility. Because when you're in a startup draft, you're not drafting for a starting lineup, right? You're picking the best player available because the only way you really improve your team in a dynasty draft, if everyone's drafting 26 to 28 players, the waiver wire is bare. The only way you're improving your team is through rookie drafts, which don't come until a year later, or trades. So you need to have depth, you need to have flexibility, you need to have maneuverability in order to improve your team post-draft. And by zapping your depth, you don't give yourself any flexibility. So do not trade up into the first round and give away a ton of these premium middle round picks. And that leads into number two, which is undervaluing starting quarterbacks in a super flex league. The startup draft is by far and away the cheapest you'll ever be able to draft starting quarterbacks, okay? You draft best player available. You you draft most valuable player available when you are on the clock in a startup draft. You don't try to acquire them afterwards. There is just straight up never going to be a cheaper time than in the startup draft to actually get a starting quarterback and get multiple of them that set you up for the future. It's okay to draft four starting quarterbacks in a super flex startup in the first seven or eight rounds. That is completely fine because guess what? Now you have depth of the position and they will be so much more valuable post-draft. You could trade them. You could trade them for a future first and a player. Two weeks ago, I went on to Fantasy Flock's Dynasty channel and there was a pick in the draft where I got up to, and I think it was like the end of the seventh, the early eighth round. And these are with other Discord members. So people are hopefully taking it a little bit seriously. I got up to my pick, and I took Geno Smith there, a starting quarterback in the NFL. And I think he was my third quarterback that I picked within the first seven, eight rounds. The next pick was Sean Tucker. So I think one of the ways it's helpful to value these quarterbacks is to look at where these rookies are going in rookie drafts and see what you could trade to grab these quarterbacks, okay? So, for instance, Sean Tucker went one pick after Geno Smith. Where is Sean Tucker going in rookie drafts right now? Sean Tucker, like, sure, someone can argue him all the way up to, like, the 112 if they really wanted to. I think in most drafts, I think if you look at keep trade cut, he's like the 207 or 208 right now. You are not acquiring Geno Smith or any starting quarterback for the 208. You need to throw at least a late first round pick in order to acquire a starting quarterback. So you want to leave your startup draft with at least three starting quarterbacks, maybe two with one other one that's like super high upside, but I would say three and then a, a fourth one with high upside. Maybe that fourth person, you know, maybe not high, high upside, but a guy like you have three starting quarterbacks and then you go, you dip back into the pool of like Sam Howell or something like that. So in Dynasty, in the startup draft, you're drafting best player available. You're not drafting for fit or starting lineup. You'll figure out trading afterwards. And then number three, similar to what I was talking about with depth, all right? Drafting your starting lineup is obviously a mistake. You know, I don't need to sit here and fucking talk to you like you're nine years old. But I would argue that most people actually overvalue depth in Dynasty once the season starts. Your starting lineup is literally the only thing that gets you points. And this goes for redraft. I mean, this goes for any league. You only get points unless you're playing in best ball. Then obviously this is not relevant to it. But your starting lineup is the only thing that gets you points, okay? So giving up depth for a higher firepower player, especially as the season progresses, is okay. You're trying to win championships. Not everyone's trying to win. Most people try to win trades, not championships, okay? That's not to say, like, you want to trade good players for players that are, like, on the buy low, whatever. You don't want to lose trades, obviously, but it's okay if a trade is 50-50 and you're just like, I don't really want to do it because I don't want to give up depth. It's okay to do that. It's okay to not have a ton of depth on your dynasty roster if you're looking to shoot for the moon, if you're looking to win the championship this year. I think some people overvalue depth and undervalue their starting lineup. Like it's it, of course it's nice to have five running backs that are really good, but if you can only start three of them, what does that actually do for your fantasy team? Number four, and I wholeheartedly believe this. You know, there are just some players on your team that you should just not trade straight up. I made a video about this last year. I forget what the title was. I think it was like um, just five players I would never trade off my dynasty team. And then I got a lot of pushback on it because people were like, you should always be open to trading players. It's like, okay, if you're going to offer me six first rounds for a player, yeah, listen, I'm going to fucking listen to it. 
But if you have Justin Jefferson on your team, the guy should never leave your team. Again, it's more important to win a championship than it is to win fucking trades. Most people act accordingly the opposite way around. Yeah, it's really fun to have three first-round picks next year or two next year and two the year after that and two the year after that. You know what's more fun? Having Justin fucking Jefferson in your lineup. If you trade Justin Jefferson for like three first-round picks or something like that, maybe you'll hit on two of the three. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll hit on one of the three, and then you have two mediocre players and one good player that you just traded for a phenomenal player. Like, don't trade Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. Don't trade Justin Jefferson. Don't trade those assets unless someone comes with fucking 40. Yeah, I get it. I get it. That's like people that need to be chronically online and chronically on Twitter and chronically need validation through likes continue to say that response to the way I'm saying this like fucking obviously yes I'm not a robot I understand that but for any normal trade you have to have so much fucking extra juice on it for me to want to give away a Justin Jefferson or a player like that speaking of trades leading into number five using trade calculators as a bible we all everyone has a screenshot dude in our league everyone has a dude who sends trade offers or receives a trade offer and the first thing they do is go to a trade calculator website whatever it is dynasty trade calculator player profile we will be building out a, tr a trade calculator in the very very near future that will be offered to you guys which i cannot wait to um, have live trade calculators are literally just bumpers on a bowling alley that is the only way you should be using them it is letting you know not to throw an extra bowling ball onto someone else's lane. Do you want to knock down pins for somebody else? No. There's bumpers set up so it doesn't skip over there. That's what a trade calculator does. If you throw a bowling ball into three lanes over, you are being asinine. You are being ridiculous. That is how you should be looking at this stuff. It's not an end all. Do you only look at someone's dynasty rankings and say, oh, this guy is three spots above. There's no fucking way I can move him for him. No, you go off your instinct. You go off your gut feeling. You go off your analysis. You go off your research. That's what dynasty trade calculators are. They're literally just someone's rankings put into some sort of value for the most part, unless you have someone very, very math heavy behind it. That's like writing algorithms and shit, whatever. You're just taking their rankings, putting it into a calculator and it's spitting back a value to you. So calculators, no different than the rankings. If you are okay trading one guy for another guy where the rankings are different, that should be the same thing with trade calculators. They are perfect for newcomers into the dynasty space to help you understand the value of future picks, understand the value of of depth versus youth versus veteran aging, etc. So use those accordingly, but don't be the fucking dickhead that screenshots every trade in the history of your league. Fuck it. Tip number six. And if, again, if you have not joined a dynasty league and you are interested in, they're my favorite form of playing fantasy football. You don't have a ton of like sit starts. You don't have a ton of waiver wire moves to make. It's pretty fucking relaxed. You can just make trades when you want to make trades. We're organizing them for you in our discord. Go join the discord. Absolutely free. Go join one of the leagues. I think they're a hundred, $150 buy-in, whatever. And they're super fun. All right. So we'll be organizing them throughout the entirety of the off season. The last one I want to throw out here is not understanding what rookie picks are for. They are simply an asset that never loses value. I love having them because that is what they are. They are an asset that very rarely dips in value. If you think about like exciting rookies, you know, like a Trey Lance or something like that, think of them as like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Think of rookie picks as high yield savings accounts. It's fun to get rid of them during the startup draft, um, which I'm totally okay with. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with stockpiling them. I'm okay with getting rid of them. I don't think there's one fits all solution, but not understanding how to use them properly is a big mistake. These things, if you get rid of them, cool, but they're going to be valuable when the season ends. They're going to be valuable right before your rookie drafts and probably even more valuable than typically right before your rookie drafts. They'll be valuable in the middle of your rookie drafts. And the reason that's the case is there's no injuries to rookie picks. There is no depth chart moves to rookie picks. There is no down year for rookie picks. Even in years where we could objectively acknowledge that a class isn't that good, like this year, the 205 is going to be exciting for somebody in terms of value, regardless. Most people play Dynasty with emotion, not logic. And that's the fun of playing. I understand that. Listen, I play emotionally sometimes. I will, there are certain guys that I just want no matter what the fucking cost is. That's 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 part of playing fantasy football. Get your guys. Everybody's looking for that dopamine hit all the time. Trading is a dopamine hit. Drafting is a dopamine hit. But most dopamine hits are not good for you long term. Being on social media, dopamine hits. Not good for you to sit there and scroll TikTok for three hours unless you're on BDG's TikTok. I'm very good for you. Having a good veteran player is boring as shit, but sometimes boring as shit wins you championships. So don't overhype rookie picks. Don't undervalue rookie picks. Don't just throw them away for because you want to try to win now unless you really think you could do so. Just take them for what they are. They are an asset that if you can play logically, not emotionally, will basically never lose value for you. 
That's it. And then the last tip I have for commissioners, for people that want to make sure that their league stays intact, that people don't trade away all their future picks and then just bounce, is, in my opinion, if anyone wants to move future first-round picks, the way we do it is, like, if you're buying in, if it's a $100 buy-in league, you have to pay $50 up front, so you're paying half of next year's buy-in already, and then you're doing $100 after that yearly. But if you want to trade future picks, future first-round picks, right? It's like, say, the year's 2023, and you're trying to do a trade where you're trading either 2024, 2025, 2026 first-round picks. Both parties involved in that trade don't care if you're receiving or if you're giving it away. Both parties must be fully paid buy-in-wise up until that year. If I want to trade a 2025 first-round pick, I'm paying the original buy-in. I'm paying the 2024 for uh, buy-in. I'm paying the 2025 buy-in. I know it's harsh, but it's exactly what you need to do in order to secure people's future. They're way less likely to try to just throw it all away, win this year, give away all their future rookie picks if they have to pay $300, $500, $600 up front because there you go. That just halved their winnings. If they end up winning this year and then dipping, like they just had to pay $600 or whatever going forward. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I would implement that rule. I know it makes it a little less fun, a few more dop a few less dopamine hits, but I think it's a really, really concrete way to make sure people are not just mortgaging their future away. All right, that's all I got for you today. Um, I hope some of that makes sense. Let me know what you guys have learned playing in Dynasty Leagues early on things that could set you back for years in a time you, you can never become a dynasty if you don't set your shit up foundationally correctly from the rip comment down below what you have learned hit the button that looks like this while you're down there subscribe to the channel if you are new put the d into it and make sure you join our discord absolutely free to join you can join a league if you want buy-in must be paid we ain't paying for that shit for you good lord i'm about to pass away i love you goodbye <laughs>